TGO, Tom Grunewald Outdoors, is brought to you in part by HT Premium Ice Tackle, Polar Fire Gear. This is how it's done. Vexilar, ice fishing begins when you turn your Vexilar on. And Tourism Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Canada's best freshwater fishing. Hello everyone and welcome to Tom Grunewald Outdoors. I'm Tom Grunewald and I'm here with my good friend and HT Pro staff member, Dennis Foster. You know, Dennis, one thing I love is fishing bass. You go out during the summertime and cast spinnerbaits and crankbaits. They're found virtually everywhere. They're cooperative, they hit hard, but most people don't associate bass with ice fishing, do they? Right, and, and you hit something there and, and they're missing a great opportunity. And, and you mentioned the word cooperative and they are cooperative at all times of the year. You just need to get out, employ some systems like we're gonna do today and, and get after them. You can have pretty consistent success. There is some strategies though, and the first one I think is conditions. First ice, late ice certainly, I think are more conducive to catching, uh, to catching bass. It's a situation like we have here today, it's relatively mild. We've got the overcast and the, the almost a light fog out here, along with the uh, thick ice and the heavy snow. Kind of insulates fish down there from any sound and the movement up here because they are a little skittish. Right. And uh, I've found with, with bass, as far as location goes, a lot of times they're either in like a muck bottom basin, deeper, or the classic uh, weed beds. Now, is that what you found here in South Dakota? Right, and, and what we've got here is we've got a combination of all of the above. You know, we've, we're fishing both species of bass, both uh, largemouth and smallmouth. We've got rocks, we've got big rocks, uh, we've got weed lines, we've got inside depressions within the weed lines. Outside of the weed lines, we've got more of a gravelly sand transitioning into the muck that you had mentioned. And the beauty of using the pop-ups is we're spread out all over and we're feeling this thing out and trying to let the fish tell us where they're at. And you know, once we have this working for us a little bit, judging by the amount of flags and where they're at, we're gonna know where they're at. Then we can turn around, follow up with some jigging techniques using our flags as indicators of where to be. Well, I'm kind of excited about this and just working with something that's relatively new and learning something new, patterning these fish. What do you say we get started? Let's get after Let's it. Let's go get it. Dennis, Dennis, we got one up over there. It's turning. It's turning. And one thing with these uh, big shoves that we're using is you don't need to be in a real big hurry. I usually let the fish actually make a good size run with the bait first and then stop like this. Let them try to swallow it. We got a mix of uh, both largemouth and smallmouth bass in this lake. We got one there. It's so hard to tell, you never know. You can catch a largemouth, catch a smallmouth. There's also some pike. There's a few walleyes in these waters. And we're just on a, a nice weed bed here with the drop off going down to about 20 feet of water. It's a perfect place for catching winter bass. But other species will relate to that edge and that forage base as well. Oh, it is, it's a nice bass, largemouth. Come here, baby, come here. <laughs> Would you look at that? Can you believe this? We're out ice fishing with tip-ups and catching bass like this. I mean, look at the size of that fish. Look at the mouth on that, okay? And it, the, con the conditions here are ideal for that. And this is, this is what's getting me so excited is you, know, you come out here and you try doing this ice fishing for bass thing and it's very difficult a lot of days. These fish just are not cold water fish, obviously. They like that warm water. And uh, so for ice fishing, it's difficult to really get on these things consistently. However, they do relate to the same weed beds, usually a little bit deeper in the winter time, and then off onto some of the uh, associated mud flats, and that's exactly what we're fishing. It's the base of that weed line and down into the mud flat. And we're just using really, really big uh, chubs, which really help to get these, uh, these fish going. They find that bait and they seem to be a little more likely to come and take, take it, and these fish, We'll come up and take those bigger baits. And again, we're just using a single, a single hook, not a treble. And these brightly colored hooks, especially if they got a little glow to them, really seem to help, especially in a situation like this where we've got the thick ice and the deep snow conditions that we have. And today's an ideal day, actually, in many respects, fishing a clear water environment here because we got the thick ice, we've got the combination of that with the snow cover and the overcast and the fog. I'm telling you, you gotta pick your days. But if you get out here and you fish these mild conditions like this, you could catch bass like this through the ice. It's amazing and it's fun. They fight hard. We'll let this girl go. Get you back in the water. 
I like to hold these bass, of course, in this cold water. They're not real active, they're kind of lethargic. Just let the gills get moving, the fins, when they're ready to go, let them go. And they start going. Bass fishing in the winter, can you believe this? This is great. <laughs> I'm gonna go and get some more lines in. You're watching TGO, Tom Grunewald Outdoors. Yep, that's perfect. You know, it's the combination of using all of today's electronic technology. We use the lake maps, first of all, to find locations we thought would be good for bass. GPS coordinates to get right out to this area. And now the sonar here to pinpoint those weed lines and that bottom content transition, the depth changes. And uh, that combination is really gonna put us on these fish. I'm excited. We are right where we wanna be. You know, it does happen. Those, you'll get fish on a tip up, they'll just come up there and boom, they'll hit it, just kind of stop and swallow it right there. They're in no hurry, especially a bigger fish. Yep, and this one just barely moved it away. And a lot of what I see is I run my baits a little bit higher than most people traditionally do. You know, I run them anywhere from a foot and a half to three, maybe four or five foot, especially if you're coming up a break. Yep. And a lot of times you can tell exactly what they've done. They've grabbed that bait and settled to the bottom with it. Okay. And they're swallowing it or repositioning it before they take off and start rolling it again. And largemouth bass can be, I mean, there's a wide variety, really a wide spectrum of, uh, of activity with these fish. I, I've had it where they'll hit and they'll, they'll just keep going and going and going until the spool's almost empty. And other times they'll do something more similar to this. They'll, they'll pop right. it, yep. drop to the bottom or just move off to the side, barely, you know, take six inches of the line out. It, you know, they're just, they're, Bass are a little fickle that way sometimes. And I think they got personalities of their own, just like humans do. You know, some fish are more aggressive than others. Yeah. Because they didn't necessarily all the fish doing the same thing at the same time of day. You know, you're seeing a little bit of everything. I think it probably depends too on the population or the density of the fish in an area. I mean, if you've got a lot of bass moving through here and they're more competitive, they're probably more likely I to agree. hit and the, run. The competition thing. Yeah. Yep. Keep it away from your buddy type of thing, especially with yep. bass. Yep. So that's something else to keep in mind. But it really hasn't been a lot of. Uh, information documented or people talking about largemouth activity during the winter time and, and patterns and where to find them. But I know I've, I've, uh, I've found them on deep mud flats, especially right at the base of uh, weed lines. And then again, classic largemouth bass habitat, just right up in the pockets and on the edges of the you know, inside weed lines. Well, then we talk, talked all about it. This guy may have dropped it because he yeah. come back to center now where it was off to the side. Yep. Well. Give it a try and see if we tease them. Sometimes just pulling the line a little exactly. bit. Exactly. You just put a little pressure on it. Other times, a lot of times they'll take off with it. This guy doesn't look like that's the case. No. Well, that'll happen. That's certainly part of uh, bass fishing during the winter time. Is you you are going to get drops with these tip ups, and sometimes you'll you'll just go and you pick up that minnow and you'll just see it kind of scraped or scratched. You can tell the difference. If you do a lot of fishing, if you catch a toothy critter like a pike, they'll make a razor blade type incision or a slash in the bait. And when it's a bass, you'll just see like almost a sandpapery rough edge, just right. like that. It, yep, you're just touching on that. He just, he roughed him up. Yep. Didn't do the chub any good. Another thing too is, is lively bait is key. Yeah. You know, these sucker chubs can and do, do work. They're the most common thing to find, particularly for us here. I'd prefer a red tail or a crick chub. They're much yep. more active. But a key is, do not be afraid to replace these baits. Yeah. If they're not kicking hard, you know, you're not getting yeah. bit, toss them out, put a new one in there, and, and uh, a lot of times you'll see an instant result out of it. He's there. Yeah, maybe just moving those yep. a little bit now. Just ever so slowly. Maybe let him take a little bit, feel comfortable with it. We'll change his opinion on his comfort level. Now this one, we're a little deeper here. Now we kind of got off of that, uh, that break. Right, and this is what this is, is kind of a sandy, gravelly transition into you know, more of a muck type basin right on the edge of, of what you'd actually call structure here. Yeah. And now I just stopped again. If you want to maybe pull a little bit of slack, and I'll pull this away from you. There you go. There you go. Swim back towards you. Possibly. Like to go. 
like to feel a little weight. There yep. we go. I just see, see? I just a slight little tip. Yeah, he's, yep. he's yep. playing with me, so I'm going to yep. play with him. I'm not. There, there he goes. goes. Yep. See, you know what I'm doing here is I'm being really cautious. I've had uh, two or three fish that uh, have dropped the bait, and uh, sometimes uh, they'll come, they'll hit these things, they'll they'll spit and let go, and they'll just swim back around and watch it. They know they injured that. It's real natural. They're going to come back and 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 hit that thing. It's almost like they're playing a little bit of a game of cat yep, and mouse with us. He's taking just a foot or two at a time here. Yep. And I'd say let's just let, let's just continue to play his game. Yep. Until we reverse his travels here. And you notice what something that Tom did there is he put ever so slight bit of pressure on that. And that's what caused that fish to continue to pull that bait a little bit. You don't want to tug it by any means, but sometimes if they feel a little resistance, that will make them commit and think that that thing's yep. getting away from them. Yep, I'm just playing cat and mouse with that fish. And I'm not so worried here, Dennis, in the deeper water, we're not probably gonna get all tangled up in the weeds. No, that no, fish is by gonna... no means. You could let him go wherever you want. We're not gonna no. have any issues with that. So make now another stuck. run. He may have settled and swallowed it now. Yeah, I'd say we give him a try here, huh? There's more fishing action to come right here on TGO. Oh, it's a bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bass? It's a small one. Was it? Yep. Frisky yeah, guy. Let's see it again. There you go. Yep. Nice little smallie. Very nice. There you go. That's all right. Isn't that pretty? You know, I mean, this is so much fun. I mean, we got a combination of both largemouth and smallmouth, which is really a little bit unusual, but. This lake has the, that classic muck bottom, dark bottom, weed bed, largemouth bass vegetation, and then this hard bottom point behind us with the rock. Right. This classic smallmouth territory, and that combination is drawing both species. Yep. It's a nice, healthy fish. And it's, and it's just not something that uh, that you're going to see very often in, in, a, in a lot of lakes, uh, the combination of both large and smallmouth. The smallmouth tend to be more in your, your what they call mesotrophic, clearwater, sand, hard bottom type fisheries. And the, Bass, of course, are more in the eutrope, darker bottoms, soft bottoms, weeds. But here we got both. Boy, that's fun. I'm just having a blast with this, and I don't think most people, if I go back, uh, start telling people uh, in Wisconsin that we're having this kind of consistency with both large and smallmouth bass at the same time, ice fishing, you're gonna believe me. And I don't think what most ice anglers don't realize is what kind of a resource really is available with these fish. At the same time, I think it's also important that we emphasize that you do practice catch and release mm -hmm. with these fish. Uh, smallmouth do tend to uh, school heavily, and if you do start to get on them, you can catch a lot. You can really hurt the fishery if you take too many of them. And uh, largemouth can be the same thing. I mean, they're catching some pretty big bass out here. You want to leave those fish, let them spawn. You'll start to see when you put these fish back in the water, You'll, you'll see the gills move a little bit, the fins, mouth open and close. They're just taking a little bit of uh, water in. They're stressed right now. Nice and easy. Oh, and you can just see it coming. Get a tail slap. There you go. <laughs> it's fun. I, I just can't believe that more people are taking advantage of this resource. Bass through the ice. This is fun, Dennis. You bet. And we're going to get some more. Okay, well, we've got all of our tip ups set. Dennis has got uh, a nice layout here of the polar pop ups all set to go. And uh, bass will bite just as readily um, on a standard jigging presentation as they will on those tip-ups. In fact, sometimes the jigging approach might even work a little bit better, just be a little bit more mobile and uh, go out and search for these fish. And I've got a good system for that. I've got one of the Polar Fire Select SX. It's a medium light action, which means I've got a nice light tip action here for sensitivity and helps me to feel the bait, have good presentation control, but I've got a real solid, strong backbone here. And with these bass, uh, I could catch anything from 10 or 12 inches right on up to 20 or 21 inches or bigger. So I need to kind of have a good compromise and this rod does just that. And then I've got that set up with a six pound test amount of filament, a short leader with a swivel just to prevent tangling. And on the terminal end here, got a Marmuska tungsten diamond jig. And what's nice about these is that got a little crystal there in the front, it gives it a little bit of flash. And this is phosphorescent and I've tipped it with a plastic freshwater shrimp. There's a lot of shrimp in the Dakota waters and that little tail provides a lot of extra action and just a single wax worm, so that gives a little bit of natural scent to that presentation. And uh, we'll see if we can't uh, jig up a couple in addition to getting some on the tip-ups. Well, this is just unbelievable. You go from one tip-up to the next. You bet. <laughs> 
Well, another thing I like about these uh, magnetic pop-ups too, Dennis, is that you can hear them. You know, when you get a calm day like this and you, you also hear that flip flip and that snap and foop. Sometimes that tube will actually make a sound. Now he came back and hit, he's probably swallowing that minnow right now, I'm hoping. And the, the option here is to wait till we get a little run or to go ahead and, uh, and hit him. And I think we're probably gonna be able to set the hook here. What do you think? I'm thinking you got him. Got him. Well, I got he didn't have a far, did he? Nope. Mm -mm. Another little walleye. Yep, see, they're starting to move in here now. A lot of people will talk about uh, oh, using uh, these these bigger baits are too big for uh, some fish. And, uh, even it, the it's, small walleyes will eat these big chubs, yep, you know. Yep. If you take a look at the length of that bait, it's easily a third, it's longer than a third, the yeah. length of that fish. Yep. They have no problem slugging these down. It's actually to their benefit, because that's gonna provide him a lot of calories and a lot of energy. If they can feed efficiently, they will. If you can look, if they can fit that bugger down their, down their gullet, they're gonna eat the thing. Do not get hung up on small baits. More fishing action online at tgofishing.com. It's going. Just gotta clear some of the. Just a, it's a nice day. Just got a real thin layer of ice in there. Still running? Yep. Yeah. Now let's get your opinion on this, Dennis. Okay. You come up on a tip up like this, and that fish is taking uh, taking line. We're using bigger chubs. We want to give them a little while, but we're not in very deep water here. So what do you think? Do we uh, should we pick that up and hit them? Well, one thing to make a judgment is start to figure out which way he's going. If he's going to to the deeper oh, water and away from the weeds, yeah. I would say he slowed down a couple times. Yeah. He's probably got it. Odds on are it's a pike or bass as fast as it's spinning it, but let's uh, let's hope we're wrong and maybe get a walleye here. Which way it's I can turning. take that or if you want to take the fish or vice versa. Oh, look at him go there. Got an angle, he's going deeper, so. Just go straight up, there you yep. go. All right, got him. Now, if you can take the line up on the spool for me, that'll be helpful. Not a lot of head shake yet. That doesn't mean it's not coming. I mean, he took a quite a bit of line again. You know, for being in shallow water, it's, the spool is pretty up. What do you got? There you go. <laughs> That'd this, be a bass. You know, it sure would be. I, you know, I'm just surprised at the size of these fish. Folks, we're, we are fishing with Dennis Foster in South Dakota. South Dakota, that's perch and walleye country, Dennis. What are we doing That's here? what most folks, you know, know us for, and, and obviously for darn good reason. We do have a few of the more classic style glacial lakes where we have these bass. These aren't stocked, you know, these are the natural real deal that have been here forever. Rinse that off and just show the size of this fish. I mean, this is an extremely well-conditioned fish, Dennis. They're, you know, fat, thick-bodied, you know, nice thick head, thick tail. Yeah, and you, you touched on something there. You can see the back end of a, of a fairly decent sized chub we're using. These fish are used to feeding big. They're in here feeding on, on small bluegills and crappies is what okay. they're doing. And they're pushing them around these weed lines or shoving them up against rocks. And we're putting a higher profile bait down for them. And it makes it uh, worth their effort to feed. You know, I think a lot of these fish will ignore a dainty type bait. And these, it's, it's surprising too, because a lot of people don't think of bass as being very active in the wintertime. And we're using these large chubs and look at the results, okay? Location has a lot to do with it. Obviously, it sure we've does. got a, a nice lake with, a, a, you know, a nice a vegetation that stays green in here throughout the winter time because of the clear water. And uh, we've got a good forage base to sustain these fish. Hey, that sure was fun. We had a great time out here. You know, I've caught largemouth bass and smallmouth bass through the ice. Not something I really specifically tried to fish for. A lot of times they were incidental catches, but we've been picking up little bits and pieces, kind of piecing together a pattern for how to consistently catch these fish. And things came together on this trip. 
Dennis Foster's got some great lakes out here in South Dakota that produce big smallmouth and some big largemouth, as you can see. And we were kind of talking about it and we're looking. Boy, we woke up in the morning, we had that fog, warm front had moved in. We said, this is it. We got to get out there and try for those bass. And you know what? It was working really well. After a couple hours, that front came through. Everything kind of brightened up. We got some sunlight. We were hoping that might actually trigger a little more action. It did. The bass kind of shut down. We got into some pike at that point. And we said, hey, you know what? Let's uh, pack this one up and let's kind of work on this again because I would really like to target those largemouth and smallmouth a little more in the future. So we'll see if we can piece together some more patterns, part of the fun of ice fishing. In the meantime, I want to thank Dennis for getting us out here and putting us on these fish. I want to thank Mike for helping us with the snow bears so we could access some of these spots. And also I'd like to thank Jan over at Roy Lake Resort for all her hospitality and giving us a place to stay so we could get warm after we're done all fishing here. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope we'll see you again here next time on Tom Grunewald Outdoors. TGO has been brought to you in part by HT Premium Ice Tackle, Polar Fire Gear. This is how it's done. Vexilar, ice fishing begins when you turn your Vexilar on. And Tourism Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Canada's best freshwater fishing. TGO, where it's all ice fishing all the time.